Well, hello and welcome YouTube, Mr. Robinson here. Let's jump straight into the material. We're gonna look at isosceles and equilateral triangles and well, hey, their properties, how we can use our knowledge of what isosceles and equilateral triangles contain in order to solve problems, find missing measures and different things like that. We're not going full bore, not talking about drawing altitudes and things like that. It's okay if you don't know what those are, just kind of the nitty gritty. Let's go straight into it. Uh, here are a bunch of triangles just as a breakdown. It's a nice snapshot that I can use for other things. I'm really just going to focus on these ones right here, the isosceles triangle and the equilateral, or also known as equiangular triangle. We'll make sure to differentiate, not differentiate, to uh, make sure to note that they're both the same things. Otherwise, hey guys, if you're not isosceles or equilateral, then that means you have no congruent sides or angles. That means you're a scalene triangle. And then on top of that, you could be a right triangle, a Q triangle, or obtuse triangle. But looking at the equilateral slash equiangular see if all sides are congruent in a triangle then all angles are congruent not only are they congruent but they're actually all 60 degrees because we know the interior angle sum of a triangle is 180 divided by 3 you get 60 so all angles are congruent at 60 degrees and it just so happens that all sides will also have to be congruent in that case see that's not true when you go to higher up when when i look at a quadrilateral uh, with all congruent sides, they don't have to have congruent angles. They don't have to be a square. They could be a rhombus and vice versa. So only for the triangle, all sides congruent, all angles congruent, um, equilateral, equiangular, all the same. Isosceles, while it does have two congruent sides, and that's what most people tend to know about isosceles triangles, two congruent sides, you might not know this, but it also has two congruent angles. And the congruent angles are the ones opposite those congruent sides. So those ones right there. We can refer to those as base angles because this it's not always on the bottom, but the non-congruent side is known as the base. The congruent sides are known as the legs, just like, sorry, I'll put leg, uh, are known as the legs, just like they are in a right triangle, like leg and leg and hypotenuse, only now it's leg, leg and base. And then this angle right here, I don't know if I'm going to refer to these in the uh, example problems I do. This angle is known as the vertex angle. So vertex angle, base, and I guess base angles, which are congruent, and then the legs are congruent as well. And there it is. So what you're going to see a lot of, guys, is if you know that the legs are congruent, we're going to have to do something with the base angles, things like that. Let's jump straight to it. I do believe that I start with isosceles triangles examples, and there are four in the way here, the last one being the most complex. But in example number one, finding the measure of angle F right here requires that, you know, we... We got to know something about these two angles here because the only known right now is the 22 degrees and that it's isosceles. Well, hey, an isosceles triangle doesn't just have congruent sides right here. It also has congruent angles opposite them. So that means that these are both then some unknown, but they are the same unknown like X. And when I add up all three of these together, 22 plus both X's, that equals 180 degrees. So if I subtract 22 from both sides, I get 158. And if I divide both sides by two, I get, oh, help me out here, 79. That, I think that's right, 79 here. Uh, so X is 79, therefore the measure of angle F is of course also, because it's X, it's also 79, but 79 degrees. And there you have it. Let's just hope all my math added up correctly here. All right, second example here, same kind of situation. We have an isosceles triangle, only now it's tilted over right don't just assume that the vertex angle is always the one on top in this case because these are the two uh not isosceles they're the two congruent sides here your vertex angles actually appear it's these two that are actually equal to each other and hey they're equal to each other i don't need to add something up to 180 and figure it out i just set these equal to each other here so here i can say that x plus 44 equals 3x nothing else to it than that subtract x from both sides and divide both sides by two, it looks like we get x equals 22. We don't just need x though, we need the measure of angle G. So now we have to substitute 22 in for x into that scenario there. Measure of angle G equals 22 plus 44, and that's going to equal 66 degrees. And there you have it. The third example, my apologies. <clears throat> the third example, find the value of x. So right here, just find x, don't do anything else. This is actually probably an easier problem than some of the other ones that you saw. 
this does have it shows these angles are congruent to each other that means that we have knowledge that this triangle is at the very least isosceles at least it also looks at the same way so an isosceles triangle doesn't just have congruent base angles but it also has of course congruent sides opposite those angles that means these two legs are congruent to each other make an equation here 5x plus 5 equals 35 subtract 5 from both sides and divide both sides by 5 we're going to get x equals 6 it's not degrees these are lengths right here we're just done we solve for x taken care of and the final example here find the values of x and y uh oh look at this shape well what you do have within here if you really look at the tick marks we have a uh, not a congruent we have an isosceles triangle right here in green and then we have an isosceles triangle right here in purple if you can see and understand that this one's just tipped over where this is the vertex angle right here and then this one's the vertex angle right here if that makes sense I'm gonna erase all this but it's kind of keep that in mind so it's kind of interesting how two different isosceles triangles are kind of built in different ways they have congruent legs all throughout but it's a different story there now because of congruent legs or because of being isosceles that means it also has congruent base angles so hmm where can we start from here let's start actually let's start with some of the side stuff here guys if I have 2y plus 1 being congruent to this I don't know anything about this but this is also congruent to that it's kind of transitive property if you think about it that means 2y plus 1 equals 4y minus 8 even though they're in different triangles right but 2y plus 1 does equal 4y minus 8 I can subtract 2y and add 8 to both sides simultaneously there simultaneously there 2y is 9 so y is 9 halves which is also 4.5 either or I honestly prefer fractions more often as long as it's non contextual especially what if it was 9 sevenths now it's kind of a number you have to round so I really like the improper fraction more but that's neither here nor there all right let's take a look at X now uh, this one might take a little bit more but because it's an isosceles triangle that also means that other base angles will be congruent to each other this is 52 this here is also 52 uh, why is that important for X because I need to start knowing some information here about this isosceles triangle but hey if this is X right here then this would also be X right these are the base angles of this isosceles triangle because these are the angles opposite those sides and the vertex angle we can actually determine because it'll be a linear pair with 52 um, I am not gonna do a whole big equation on this but 180 minus 52 gives us 128 degrees which is going to be what this guy is right here so we have three angles within this isosceles triangle right here and they add to 180 as they do for any triangle so here I can say 128 plus 2 X's there equals 180 subtract 128 oh you know what shoot I just I just fell into my own trap guys this is uh <laughs> this is me not doing the problems beforehand these are let me let me stretch this let me do this another way you could solve this if you wanted to these X's right here are remote uh, they have a remote exterior angle of 52 right so this X plus this X equals that one right there I'd have to hide some stuff to show you it like I'd have to like ignore let me delete some of this ignore kind of all this right here oh actually I want that one do you see how the 52 is a remote uh, exterior angle to these X's see if that kind of makes sense there so that was in the previous video but uh, X plus X or 2x equals 52 therefore x equals 26 fell into my own trap of not recognizing that from the jump oh well at least you get to see the connection or at least see light bulb right here okay now let's go ahead and look at equilateral or equiangular triangles here example number one find the value of x so with the congruent tick marks all sides being congruent means it's an equilateral triangle by that knowledge all angles are going to be not only congruent you can skip that step if you also know that they are all 60 degrees that means this one particular unknown angle measure of 2x plus 32 is also 60 degrees so just finding x here subtract 32 from both sides I really want to not spend as much time on the algebra it's really about the setup I'm sure you can follow the rest of the way if you're kind of good on the algebra uh, example number two find the value of y in this case here I see a 60 and 60 must be an isosceles triangle hmm. however this goes even further than that because of course just like the last one everything being 60 degrees two of these are 60 the only way that's possible guys is if that third one's 60 as well 
right? This must be an equiangular triangle. And what do equiangular triangles have? All sides congruent because equiangular are equilateral. That means these two are also equal to each other. 2 thirds y minus 3 equals 7 thirds y minus 13. And uh-oh, fractions, not a problem, guys. Multiply both sides by 3 from the jump just to get bust, bust the fraction right now. Distribute the 3. 3 times 2 thirds is just 2, so we get 2y there. And 3 times 3 is 9, so 2y minus 9 equals 3 times 7 thirds is 7, so 7y minus 3 times 13 is 39. Um, subtract 2y, add, uh, it's from both sides, add 39 to both sides there, and divide by 5, and we get y equals 6. All right, so we solve those two there. One more, just three uh, equilateral, whatever example problems here. Triangle FGH is equilateral with FG equals X plus five, GH equals, this is the length of, length of FG is this, GH and FH is this, find its perimeter. So what we're gonna do here, I wanna do the when in doubt, draw it out scenario here. Here's my F, G, H. FG is going to be, first of all, this is equilateral, so all congruent. This is going to be X plus five. 3x minus 9 and 2x minus 2. Here's the thing, guys. They're all equal. So, you know, you don't have to use all three equations, use all three expressions to set up an equation. Just do two of them. They, as long as they only have one variable to solve for, let's go ahead and do that. No matter what you do, you should be getting the same value for x if the problem was set up correctly. We'll see if I did that right. But anyway, uh, x plus 5 and 2x minus 2, those sound good. Why don't we set those equal to each other? x plus 5 equals 2x minus 2. So if I subtract x and add 2 to both sides there, I'll be getting x equals 7. Okay, so you know, hopefully no matter what you do on any of these problems, you still end up just getting x equals 7. As I'm looking through it, yes, you will. So x equals 7, no matter which one you do here, we still gotta find the perimeter though, okay? So we gotta find out, you know, the perimeter of this thing is gonna be adding up all of these lengths, right? So 7 plus 5 is 12. 21 minus 9 is 12. I'm just confirming this, and 14 minus 2 is 12. So the perimeter here is going to be, oh, uh, well, 3 times 12, which is 36 units, and I'm all satisfied there. Taken care of. There's perimeter. That is the answer. All right, I have one more kind of bonus problem for you here. There's a graph based one. Sketch this triangle on a graph. I got R at 0, 2, S at 2, 5 and t at 4 comma 2 and let's figure out what kind of triangle this thing is by its side measures so as far as drawing this i'm going to connect the dots and really it's about you know this is about isosceles versus equilateral what have you maybe it's one maybe it's the other are, are all isosceles triangles equilateral i guess so excuse me are all equilateral isosceles i guess so um but is this equilateral isosceles? Let's find out. Well, the length from R to T right here, I can count that. That's one, two, three, four. But these other ones, you know, it's gonna take a little bit because I gotta use maybe Pythagorean theorem to figure those two, uh, those two out. So, you know, I can draw these little right triangles here and this goes up one, two, three, and it goes over one, two. So I have a right triangle here where I can find out this unknown length, I'll call it X, by saying two squared plus three squared equals x squared. That gives me 4 plus 9. If x squared is 13, then x is the square root of 13. And that is the unknown length right there. Well, good news here, if it does help you, this does go up 3 and over 2 like the last one. So Pythagorean theorem would also give you square root of 13 on this guy. If they're both square root of 13 and the other side is 4 here, I guess that makes this an isosceles triangle. Sorry, I'm making this thing blue. There we go, square root of 13, square root of 13, and four. I guess that makes this an isosceles triangle because two, I gotta spell it right, because two of the sides are congruent and only two. Now, is it a right triangle or anything? I don't think so, but there you have it. All right, that was just that last example. Again, some Pythagorean theorem in there. Again, this is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. I sure hope you understood something about the properties and how you can use them to solve four parts of equations and problems. Thank you, take care.